welcome to a snarky snippet, the one where I've actually read Endgame. Well, I come to you thoroughly kindled, Endgame or the airing of grievances game. I've read enough to be certain that although it is clearly stated by the author that Harry and Meghan did not directly contribute to this book, let's just say their indirect influence looms large and at times feels like not Diana's experience of there being three in the marriage, but three in the book. Helped by constant references to spare to reinforce the royals are the bad guys narrative, as well as cherry pick stories from numerous royal biographies carefully retold from Omer's perspective. While it's my intention to give you a proper review and comparisons of narrative on camera, I wanted to share my initial impressions before I get too bogged down by my own logic. There are certain themes in the book, the prevailing theme being that nothing is ever Harry and Meghan's fault. All those occasions where we, the fatigued general public, perceive the Sussexes are trying to detract from an important royal occasion, for example, are flipped, turned on their head. Catherine's Christmas carol service in its second year was time to detract from the launch of the Harry and Meghan docuseries, not the other way around. This seemed to indicate an overinflated sense of the Sussexes' importance in the scheme of things. However, it is ever-present and somehow seems quite personal if you can read between my snark. No one is safe. Serious allegations are made that will be addressed in my usual two-camera reviews. However, some examples of light bitchiness are as follows. Angela Kelly gets a mention. Apparently, she not only keeps tiaras from Meghan's grasp, but was also responsible for keeping the Queen's deteriorating health a secret. And I quote, she was one of the first to know about and keep the secret of the Queen's Queen's health diagnosis. We are then told Charles didn't like her anyway, and after an NDA, she was duly chuffed off away from Windsor. Edward Young was also to blame, being slow to find a starting role for Meghan. I think he meant to say starring role for Meghan. There is a palpable sense of frustration that she wasn't given centre stage on her first day, in her first hour, in her first minute. Her appointment as royal patron at the National Theatre, taking eight whole months, was due to Edward Young's dithering and was apparently a no-brainer because she was an actress, don't you know? Scooby doesn't seem to understand that Megan's acting experience differs rather dramatically from the aims and culture of the National Theatre. Deal or no deal, questionable roles that require appearing from under the dashboard of a car or a sixth on the call sheet part of a cable drama does not make it a no-brainer omed, but rather a no deal. There are familiar tropes such as grey men or as Megan's pals apparently call them, a nest of vipers. Very dramatic, very national theatre. The British public gets a very large scolding due to their desire to read tabloid newspapers. And I quote, a society obsessed with surfaces and superficialities, addicted to gossip and celebrity and demanding beauty and gore in equal measure. Nothing like the societies in Hollywood or Melodrama Cito. And probably the very people that won't buy your book, Omid. So there lies the rub. He asserts that if it wasn't something fatally flawed about the British character, they wouldn't be there, the tabloid newspapers. So at least you know where you stand, you naughty, naughty people. There is so much more in this book, some highly deserving of more quick snarky snippets and other bits that need to be counted more seriously, and I will take my time with that. I will give him this, though. He's a much better writer than Megan. I'm so glad he put all that resentment and victimhood and word salading into his own words.
Bye. A snarky snippet is just personal opinion based on material that is currently out in the public domain. It is intended to be satirical and full of conjecture. So please do not accept any part of the snarky snippet as fact. You must do your own research and come to your own conclusions.